Hello Orchid fans, what's up? Welcome back. Um, I'm gonna do a bit of a, probably gonna be a pretty long video today and I'm gonna do basically two parts. So one of them will be a repot of this monster. So this is my miniature Catlia Mini Quinny Angel Kiss and it's clearly just climbing out of that terracotta pot. So I think it's time for it to go into something bigger. And as I'm reporting this, I'm also going to give you a bit of an update on my orchids, on my setup. I haven't done it in a while, so I thought I'll just show you any changes, any uh, any kind of new setups that I've done. So um, yeah, so we'll try and kind of do both of them at the same time. Um, so it might turn into a movie, <laughs> so bear with me. I hope you guys enjoy and let's get going. What's up? Alright, so as I was saying, I've got this uh, mini Queenie Angel Kiss, if that's the right orchid, um, here. And when I got it, it had very few uh, growths, it had absolutely no roots, and um, yeah, it was really, really struggling. So you can see a couple, so you can see this one growth here. They were quite weird as well, like even this one, you can see this leaf has got this marking as well at the back. Um, so I wasn't sure if this orchid is all right even. And then it had this tiny grove here, which is pretty much now is um, breaking off. Um, but since then, it was kind of sitting in the spot for a while, not doing anything. And it actually has a support, which you can, can't really see anymore <laughs> because it's just hidden. Um, but you might be able to see um, just the end of it right here um so yeah it's outgrown the pot so nicely you can see all these roots are growing outside the pot and they seem very, very nice but um the ones that have grown in the pot they kind of look dead to me so i think that this media is probably already pretty old and um yeah these roots are not really liking the media and you can see they're kind of failing and I've got a new growth right here progressing pretty well and I think that this growth so this is the latest growth um, on the other kind of another side of the, of, of the orchid and that's gonna push out a new growth pretty soon here as well and um, so yeah it's um, it's got two directions of growth and it's constantly growing it hasn't bloomed for me yet so I'm hoping it will at some point I'm trying to keep it kind of closer to the lights, hoping that that would um, kind of encourage it to bloom um, because the leaves, they, they do seem quite dark, so I think it was maybe not getting enough light, although the lights on my shelves are pretty strong, but yeah, I, I don't think that was maybe enough. So what I was gonna do is plug it in this pot here first and basically soak it so i've got some water here and i was gonna fill this up and let it sit here for a bit because the clay pot you know it's not gonna be very forgiving um, for the roots so when i will try and get those roots out of the pot i'm sure you know we're gonna have to leave some roots stuck to the pot but i will try and I would like to try and save as many roots as I can so I'm gonna let it soak here and while it's soaking let's go and have a look at my other orchids all right so first of all let's have a look at the setup so I made um, a few changes basically not nothing drastic but um, what I've done is I've noticed that some of the orchids are getting way too much light um, and I'll show you a few examples. So what I've done is I've actually removed lights from these shelves. So there is one here and then if you move down, I removed lights from here. So basically I've now got two shelves 
which you know they don't have direct lights but I also removed um, these plastic sheets um, from from the shelves above so that the, the lights that are for these shelves they can kind of filter down onto the shelves without, without the lights so I'm hoping that um, basically they will get enough light from those um, lights above but it's not gonna be too much so that it won't um, you know they won't burn anymore and yeah a few examples would be for example this Stolumnia here so that's Stolumnia peach and um, it was quite purple before and now it's kind of greening up so I think you know it's it's happy that it's not getting as much light anymore and um, my twinkles they were burning really bad um, so you know I think majority of the leaves have now fallen but you can see here that is definitely light you know too much light and um, yeah you see the leaves are just kind of getting marked even these ones you can see that they were started kind of getting markings on them as well before I remove those lights and um, so this was red fantasy and then my cinnamon twinkle so this one you can see even more these leaves here they're absolutely burned and at first I thought this may be fertilizer barn, but I'm, I barely feed them, so I can't see it being fertilizer. Um, and again, these newer growths, you can see how kind of discolored the leaves are. And you know, here in particular. So yeah, I was kind of just trying to get rid of that extra light so that they can get a bit of a break and they the all of this discoloration seem to have stopped since i've done it it's not really been that long it's been maybe i don't know i would say three weeks four weeks since i've done it so but yeah the plants seem to be kind of um responding well to it and the other benefit i'm getting is i no longer have the heat coming from the lights on the sh on these shelves so I can actually grow cooler growers on my shelves. So for example, my Mazdevalia um, used to get, you know, really discolored leaves like this old one you can see still. And the growth would be very small and the leaves were dropping very quickly. And now I can actually grow them on the shelves. So I used to keep them on my windowsill and now I can grow them here. And you know, this one doesn't seem to be stressed at all anymore. It's growing pretty well. My other one is this one and um, so this is um, gosh I forgot Plurothalis Dilemma sorry so again that's a cooler grower and um, yeah it used to abort new growths all the time I actually managed to grow four new growths and I'll maybe pull it out and show you in more detail which growths it um, managed to develop so Again, you know, it seems to now enjoy it a bit more now that it's not getting the heat from the bottom. So yeah, that's that's kind of the setup change. Um, the, all the fans are still, you know, on every shelf. So I've not removed the fans. Um, I do think that actually these fans, you know, they kind of encourage the pots to dry out quicker and um, a lot quicker. And sometimes it's too quick. Um, so I have to water my orchids every two, three days. And honestly, I would, um, you know, I would prefer to, to, to water them less often, but it is what it is. I just have to look after them and have to make sure they do have water. But, you know, now that I'm kind of, I always keep a bit of water at the bottom. Um, so they do seem to, you know, to kind of manage with that. So yeah, so that is kind of the setup change um i've also repotted my um cherry baby so you can see it here this is an absolute monster that is i think maybe three or four pieces in here i think it's maybe three and it actually bloomed for me recently and as it was blooming i wanted to kind of let it do it but as soon as kind of the flower spike finished i thought i have to repot this because um, these new growths they were right at the edge of the pot you know the, the roots had nowhere to go anymore 
and even the groves themselves couldn't really plump up because there was no space in the pot and there is quite a few new growths so this one as well here um, and there is a few a few at the back but it's just a massive massive orchid I didn't want to kind of separate it out I thought it would be nice to just keep it all as one piece you know it's so massive if all these new growths bloom you know it should give me about three four spikes in one go that would be a really a massive you know beautiful show um, I potted it in Lekka as you can see so it is um, it was in Lekka before and the root system just exploded in the pot so I kept it in Lekka but I potted it as you can see in um, in just you know plastic pot so it's, there is no um, transparent pot, pot inside it but the roots seem to grow really well and you know hopefully I'll be able to see um, from above the media if the plant is not enjoying um, you know the life and um, if there is any problem with the roots I'm sure I'll be able to kind of see it but yeah I thought it's actually more important to just give it bigger pot and that was the only pot I had it's almost like a bucket <laughs> so um, I'm not, I don't have anything bigger than that so it's gonna have to kind of um, live in here for now and we'll see and we'll see how it does <music> All right, I thought we'll maybe try this angle and see if you can maybe see a bit better from above rather than from the side. Um, let's see what we can do with this plant. Oh, look, it actually just lifted out of the pot on its own. Wow, that was easy. <laughs> I did not expect it to be that easy. Well, that's nice. So I don't know if this orchid was just ready to get out of here. Um, and um, yeah I just couldn't wait so I will try and ease out this bark but honestly I can just see straight away that all of these roots are just I don't know they look dead but honestly they are actually quite firm so hmm, I'm not sure and there is so many springtails in here Honestly, I feel like I want to get rid of all these springtails like in all of my pots. They're everywhere. Do you guys have an, like, a, an outbreak of springtails? I feel like it's just, they're everywhere. They're just multiplying in every single pot. And even when I repot my orchids into fresh media, in a couple months time, it's just full of springtails and I know that they don't actually harm your orchids because they don't feed on the on the fresh or live you know substance they would feed on all of these dead roots and breaking down media etc but I feel like if there is actually too much of them what if they just I don't know run out of food you know run out of all this dead matter in the pot would they then start eating the actual live roots for example of the plant or would they not I'm not sure but I just don't like how many I've got it's just it's just way too many so you can see my support here as well I don't know if I want to pull it from here because it's got um, you know at the end it's kind of bent so I don't want with that bend to just break the break the growths off um, but yeah, you can see like all these roots here. They don't look They don't look very good um, So I think I'm gonna probably cut off majority of them I found one root in the middle that is still nice and green. It's got a green root tip. So that must be a fresh Fresh root that just came through into the pot. So I hope and it's actually stuck to the old root typical um so I might need to just leave it be. We'll see. Um, and then there is another branch that tried growing here. And then it seems like it's kind of rotted in the end. So I think that's gonna come out as well. But yeah, it's pushed out a lot of new growths, this plant. And, um, and also roots. I mean, it's quite a lot of roots in here. Um, and I can always see that it's 
you know, pushing out new roots out of the new growth. So every time it pushes out a new growth, it will push out maybe three or four roots out of that growth. And because it's pushing out the new growth so quickly, it means that it's always growing new roots as well. So it's got quite a lot of roots. Um, so I don't even know if I wanna try and get all this bark off so precisely or if I should just cut these roots first and then see how much bark just comes off with that. Um, because I feel like I'm gonna have to cut away quite a lot here. And also, this is a climber, which is honestly not my favorite. Um, but you can see like this growth here that was kind of one of the first growths. I think I actually got the orchid with this growth. It's right here at the bottom and this root grew over it and bent it off and it's almost now almost kind of coming off. And now we've got growths coming from here. You can see it's just climbing so quickly. Um, so this might maybe be seen a bit better. So here is a new growth right here and then the old growths are right down over there so yeah climbers are not easiest honestly to grow in a pot but i can't really grow them in in you know mounted because i don't have the humidity to be able to care for them on the mound so they're gonna have to go back in the pot and then we'll see we'll see how it goes and this root didn't really want to come off, so this is probably not a fresh root. I'll take it off at the base. I wanted to repot this orchid last week, but um, I got ill and wasn't really feeling well the whole weekend, so wasn't able to really do anything with this one, so you might still hear in my voice that it's not 100% but I'm feeling much much better now um, so hopefully me talking so much on this video is not gonna set me back um, I hate being sick you know that feeling is really not nice isn't it um, okay so I honestly hope you can see what I'm doing I can't really see the screen so if I'm out of shot, forgive me. I'll try and be mindful of where the camera is so that you can see as much as possible. But yeah, I feel like almost all of these roots need to come away, honestly. Um, so it's just gonna be those aerial roots left. I'm also kind of wondering if I should keep those roots aerial or if I should plug them in the pot. I know a lot of times aerial roots don't adapt well to media, but at the moment I can't really hydrate the plant very well, you know, because all the good roots are in the air. I'm trying to remove this very carefully from this root it is live. I hope I didn't kill it. It's still got a growing tip so I would like it to stay and grow. So yeah this plant is barely gonna have any roots left so I might actually still need the support um, so it can stay in the pot. I'll try and pull it out. Here we are. Yeah, so see the support was actually quite long and um, yeah, you couldn't even see it after um, it's just kind of outgrown it entirely. So let's see, but you can see anything I'm cutting off, they're just black roots. So I honestly can't see them doing much good in the pot um, but I think maybe a few a few
few roots here might actually be not too bad. Right, so I think that's all the roots cut away so you can see what it would go in the pot. There is actually not that much left. Um, so I do wonder if maybe some of these, I maybe will plonk it in a bowl and try and get those roots hydrated and see if they are flexible enough to kind of guide them down. But I mean, even these roots, check them out. They're so long. I can't even put them in the pot. They're just way too long. Unless I can get them flexible enough to actually kind of rotate them inside the pot. Um, so my plan would be to, if I put the aerial roots in the pot, I would try and position them around the edges of the pot. And that way, you know, because the pot will have holes on the sides, like this, for example, then if the root is right at the edge of the pot, you know, it will actually get quite a lot of air. So it's not gonna be fully inside the media. It's actually going to be, you know, it will get enough air so it should dry out pretty quickly and it will only have media kind of on the inside. Um, so only half the root would kind of be covered with media. And I feel like that might be almost, you know, a half decent um, chance, you know, give them, give them a, a chance to basically survive and maybe adapt to this kind of hybrid. Um, what I was also thinking to do is maybe cut away these smallest bulbs. I mean, honestly, they're not really serving any purpose here. I mean, these are just so tiny. I can't see this, you know, doing that much for the plant anymore. So I just pulled it off, which is maybe not the best way. But there is also one bulb, which is kind of like it's got two leaves on. And I don't think this plant should really, it's not a bifoliate, but obviously, you know, with orchids, you just, you just never know. They just do whatever they want. But I think, so check this out. It just looks so distorted. It had these markings as well at the bottom of the leaves. And that's what I was dealing with to begin with. That orchid just did not look right, you know, and this is the only bulb that has got two leaves on it. All the others, they've only got one leaf, and I think that's that's how it should grow. Um, and then I've got this distorted pseudobulb that was kind of, you know, I was saying back then it's doing some yoga poses here, but they just, oh, crap. I think I actually separated the plants. Oh, I did not want to do that. Oh wow, we've got two plants now. Um, so it was actually kind of growing. It had two directions of growth. Oh, I really didn't want to actually separate it out. I feel quite bad now. Um, I didn't realize this bulb was actually holding both sides. That's a shame because you know i feel like i'm gonna set it back quite a lot now you know cut, i cut away so many roots and now i'm basically you know halved it so it's gonna only have half the resources as well so that's not the best honestly i didn't want to do it but oh well it is what it is i think i'm gonna put them both back in the same pot so I'm wondering now if I should keep this bulb here or not because and now you can actually see how much of a climber it is so it's got a bulb coming from here and then we've got another one up here the next one was actually this one here and then you can see again like how far up this started growing and it created such a long rhizome before growing and then I think the next growth will come from here. There is an eye over here, if you can see it. So it's gonna be coming from here. Um, so this piece, it's got quite long roots. Um, 
so yeah I think well now I'm gonna have to definitely try and push all of these roots into the pot as much as I can because now it's definitely gonna need some help and some feeding but I want to get rid of these roots they don't look healthy and yeah so I don't know what to do with this because like all the roots are coming out above this growth so it's gonna be either buried in the media or these roots are gonna be half aerial so I'm not sure yet what to do with it I'll try and basically soak this soak the roots and see what happens then if they're flexible enough to go in the pot they might maybe get rid of the growth but if they won't be and these are gonna be aerial anyway then I may as well just kind of pot it in, in, in the pot with it um, and kind of let it have more energy. So I'll put it on the side. So let's have a look at this other piece. So yeah, so this piece has got more of these. Yeah, so see it's just coming off on its own. So this is the oldest part of the of the plant um, and again you can see this leaf has got the markings but also look at the shape of that leaf it's just not a normal shape um, and then this one was kind of starting to get normal but then again you know it's got these markings as well so yeah when I got the orchid with all these oddly shaped um, growths I honestly thought that something is wrong with the plant and I won't be able to really grow it that well but in the end it seems to have corrected itself and it's now growing well so this piece is gonna have three mature growths um, and they are nice and clean leaves so it's looking good and then this this is the latest growth with a massive leaf on it and then it's got a new growth here on the side and it's now kind of pushed away from the previous growth so it is well on its way and I hope that we're gonna get some new roots from it so there is no new roots coming from that new growth yet so we're gonna get new roots in and I hope we can get down into the pot which will allow um, for this plant to kind of survive and it's gonna have four four growths once that new one matures so I hope it's enough to keep this orchid alive um, and yeah we'll see if we can kind of try and get them to grow together I would prefer to just keep them all in one pot rather than separate them out um, but we'll have to we'll have to wait and see so I'll get this in the water and start it soaking and as it soaks let's go and have a look at some other orchids I wanted to show you a few recent um, kind of repots, repositionings and some new growths as well and then in the next clip I'll show you some blooms so stay till the end if you're interested um, but this one here so this is my Aspidogeny Argentia this one here it was growing in a small pot like that but it was kind of going up growing up and it had you know it was always it's always trying to push roots out of the stem as it keeps growing but because it was so high up in the pot it obviously had no um, no access to the media and it couldn't grow any new roots so basically what I've done is I kept the root ball and the you know the original roots in this pot but I repositioned it so that I can kind of lay the plant down into this spot which is shallow and you know try and encourage to the roots to grow from this section here and then once I can see that it's grown some roots I can then just basically cut it here 
and separate the old root ball but at the moment I don't want to get rid of all these roots because you know jewel orchids they are you know they love moisture and if I take it off straight away and would leave this basically without any roots I don't think this plant would survive I mean it's not got that much humidity here um, in my room so you know roots are paramount to to the jewel orchids and I was kind of I wanted to make a community pot and I plonked my um, Makoda spatola in here as well I had it basically all around you know around the pot and um, here as well but they are not happy obviously I don't think they will really survive so we'll see you know as I can still see some green coming from the top I'm keeping these but if they are totally you know if they totally die they're gonna go away um, and that's what happened to all the plants on this side they all just browned up so they were dead and um, I don't know my Makoda spatola was growing so well it was expanding so nicely and then it just slowly kind of started going downhill and I tried a few things and nothing seems to have worked so it is a shame I think I'm probably gonna lose it um, but I might actually replace it I really like Makoda spatola and I actually quite like the idea of having a community pot of you know two jewel orchids in one pot I thought it would have looked really cute especially if Makoda spatola has expanded and kind of covered you know the around area and then aspidogeny kind of in the middle so but yeah we'll see we'll see how this progresses and then talking about setup so my Luisia primulina I used to have it in a small pot um, you know basically like this and it actually never had any roots at the base so um, I don't know if you'll be able to see but that's the base of the plant you can see there is no roots here there is one dried up root over there but I think it's totally dead so I don't think it really does anything to the plant um, and it's got another root here and then as we go up there is one root here as well and that's it so this root here wasn't able basically to do anything at all and since I got this plant it never grew one new root for me and you know looking seeing that these roots are coming from the stem basically anywhere on the plant I've kind of I don't know set up some kind of a moss you know wall for it basically a mount and I put that orchid around it so I basically got um, the microfiber strip going through the back and it goes all the way to the bottom of the pot and I always leave water in here um, you probably can't see very well but there is water up to here I usually fill it up, fill it, fill it up uh, above the glass beads so the glass beads are here really just for weight because this is just a plastic bottle so it you know it has no weight so if I if I would just put this orchid like that it's so unstable it just falls out so um, yeah I put glass beads to kind of have some weight at the bottom and I'm just kind of you know just trying to see what's gonna happen I do think that actually the the stem and these leaves they have plumped up I think they were a lot more kind of desiccated so I don't know we'll see if it does anything but ideally I would like to see some new roots coming you know but there is nothing at all and um, it is growing nicely you know it's growing these new leaves from the top all the time so I have grown probably four or three leaves at least um, since I got it about a year ago so it is growing from the top it's just I have no new roots and it's kind of starting to make me nervous because obviously these older roots they're gonna get tired they are already pretty tired but you know they will kind of wilt away and die and actually I feel like this one is probably already doing it so you know it's not gonna have those roots forever so I really wanted to you know to encourage it to grow more roots so we'll see if that actually works if it survives but for now that's um, that's how it's gonna live and then we'll see and then I've got a few orchids with some beautiful new groves so this is my Dendrobium Specioso Maizuru um, it pushed out this grove and then it pushed out the grove on the other side so 
it seems to now have two directions of growth we'll see if they actually both kind of grow um, at the same time for for now it's only pushing out one new growth at a time but you can see these beautiful leaves so as as it develops it's got those beautiful kind of um, marked leaves you know it's only got a bit of green but they're basically white and when they start pushing out a new growth then usually the leaves start greening up but at the moment this leaf is not really greening up at all even though I have a new growth on the other side so I might actually have two growths with white leaves that would be pretty cool the new growth is pink um, as well so it is very pretty they usually develop quite quickly as well you can see how pink it is from here um, but yeah I've only noticed this new growth about a week ago and it's already now so big um, so yeah it should develop in probably a month or six weeks so this one will be the next one to be repotted I think let me know if you like guys to see the repot video um, of this one I think I'm gonna have to move it in the bigger pot it seems to have enough space at the base but if I lift it up it's actually got loads of roots so you know everywhere outside the pot so I think it would probably enjoy a bigger pot so yeah that one needs needs a bit of attention and then so this is my Pluratalis dilemma that I just showed you before so yeah it pushed out four new growths and thankfully for the first time they actually developed not maybe to the full potential like for example this one this one seems to have you know the horns are actually bigger than the base so yeah that one is not not fully developed it does have a bud inside so hopefully it will bloom but yeah it's just looking a bit weird and then the other growth it's grown is this one here and that is a proper growth you can see hopefully you know how long it is and then the horns are just at the top so you know it that's that's kind of grown properly I am a bit surprised that these horns haven't kind of split I mean they are you can see they are actually split but they're kind of straight you know you can see like this one these horns kind of cross over at some point but yeah for that one they haven't but at least this is a fully grown um, growth and you know it looks it looks right basically so that's a plus and then the other one it was this one here so again it kind of stopped growing at the base and you can see it's got this kind of dried up tip um, so it stopped growing suddenly and again this is not a fully developed growth and um, you know the horns are starting from here so it's almost kind of half and half which it shouldn't be like that this should have been a lot longer but again you know it is what it is I think this one is gonna bloom as well at some point um, so and then I think it was maybe that is the fourth growth um, again not you know it had this dried up tip so it's really just one growth had properly grown all the others are not not fully kind of correct but I'm happy that at least I managed to get new growth from it that you know pushed up and they didn't just die kind of at the base which you know was happening a lot before so that one seems to seems to be doing a bit better and this is my epidendrum no ID it's got very beautiful orange flowers I got a cakey basically from uh, one of my friends on Instagram so she sent me this small cakey which has grown a lot it only had two leaves when I got it and it bloomed for me and now it's pushing out this other growth so you can see it's now taller than the first one I shifted it up um, on the shelf which has lights right below it and now I can see it started burning its leaves you can see here as well so obviously this one is not a light lover so that one is going down on the shelf which doesn't have lights right above it so that we can stop this burning happening but there is I think another leaf coming here from the base so that is good and um, so hopefully that will bloom as well and I've also got a new growth already coming it's just um, hiding behind this root but hopefully you can see so there is a new growth starting here as well 
so this one is growing really nicely I really enjoy this um, growing this small plant and let's have a look at my dendrobium berioda so it started pushing out the new growth you can see it here and check out how big it is it's so nice and chunky um, I'm trying to not um, break other orchids next to it but you can see it's actually really big and um, previously I've grown these two new growths so this one here and this one over here and you can see they are a lot smaller and even at the very base they are kind of um, slimmer you know canes whereas this one you can just see straight away it's gonna be nice and big new growth so I'm really excited to see that developing and I hope it's gonna be kind of taller and bigger and more mature um, this was actually a cakey as well I got it from one of the other orchid growers through Facebook so um, it was a pretty well established cakey when I got it but yeah it's um, it seems to have kind of fully established in my environment so I'm hoping it's gonna grow well for me and the last one I wanted to look at is this Zendrobium um, Burana twist. If, if that's the right idea, it hasn't bloomed for me yet, so I'll have to wait and see. But this orchid here, you can see it's quite tall. When I got it, it had those three, three new growths, those three canes. And I grew this one last year, which didn't bloom unfortunately. And now I'm having this new growth for this year, for this season. And it seems to be growing really nice. Um, so the leaves are coming up and it is quite thin but i think it will thicken up if i if i remember right this one was quite thin as well to begin with and then it thickened up later on so i'm hoping that that it's gonna do the same thing if i can't bloom it this year i think i'm gonna have to probably rehome it to someone else because you know obviously it's it's just not then liking my environment um i was kind of letting it get away with not blooming on this growth because um, you know it only had three canes before and this cane seems quite small so that was probably a seedling cane so it was just maybe not that ready to grow uh, to bloom sorry and also it does have these markings on the older groves so I don't know if it had some issues maybe before I got it and it was probably treated because the growth I grew is nice and healthy and you know it doesn't have any discolorations so you know it just maybe have gone through quite a lot of stress so but i you know i do expect this growth to now be kind of fully ready to bloom so we'll see we'll see how it goes i'm hoping you know in some in winter sorry we will maybe have a spike on that one <music> Okay, so it's been soaking for a while now. Um, so these roots have greened up. So I don't know if they will be flexible enough to kind of circle them in the pot. Um, I guess we'll just have to try and put them in the pot and just see what happens. Um, so I've got a few options for the pots. Um, I've got this nine centimeter pot. So I probably was a bit too optimistic to think it can I can cram it in there we'll see how the roots are going and then I've got this 11 centimeter pot which is kind of more shallower but it is quite wide so that might actually work um, and it's got quite a lot of drainage as well so um, you know if we putting those aerial roots in the spot and we're kind of putting them around the edges it might get enough air to not basically to not die and then I've got a 12 centimeter pot. So again, I've got some holes on the side, so it should be enough drainage. And it's got plenty of holes at the bottom. So this, this pot is quite big. I don't know if I need it to be that big. Um, you know, the orchid is a miniature, so I'm hoping I can actually get away with just using this 11 centimeters. Nine might just be a bit too small. Um, previously, that terracotta pot, I believe it was eight maybe centimeters so it was smaller even than nine um so yeah so let's try and just um this is not gonna be easy so i'll see if i can actually move this tray with the water without spilling it all on me okay so let's see what we can do i mean these two roots are just going in 
opposite directions as well which is not ideal I wonder if I can at least twist them so they are facing the same direction these ends and then we can just try and kind of circle the pot around in the same direction I don't think it's gonna give let's see if the bigger pot would maybe work I really wish these two roots were actually going in the same direction that would just make it a lot easier so that might actually maybe work so it would be a bit on the side but actually that's okay i think because this is the growing um direction basically that's where the new growth is gonna come from so i think that's okay i do actually have this root coming out of the pot already so that's not ideal but i do wonder if i can actually pull it out without um yeah there we are so yeah i might actually have to use a 12 centimeter pot purely for those roots so okay let's see about this other grove so can it go in as well so the new growth is on this side here so i could either put this on the other side and have the new growth kind of growing towards the middle or I could put the plant in the middle of the pot and have the new growth kind of growing towards the sides but given that this other growth with so many roots I don't think I'll be able to really move it that much more it's just gonna have to stay as it is so if I can just plug this one in the pot like that that one is a little bit easier to work with because this one doesn't have such a massive root system so it should be a bit easier to do um, but yeah I think I'll maybe just do it like that um, so yeah you can see they're kind of both separated out completely but that's you know I don't mind honestly it's not it's not a problem and this grove here is kind of crammed you can see how deep in the pot it is but I'm planning to use large bark so you know hopefully it's not gonna be that um, that wet kind of around the base so it might be okay but as I was saying I was thinking to maybe get rid of that new growth anyway and actually I might do it because that would give a bit more room at the edge um, and would be good not to get not to spill the tea as well in the process so let me see if I can just cut it off and then pull it out Honestly, it's not ideal, you know, this is a non-bloomer for me, so I really want this orchid to bloom ASAP. So I, at least I can see if it's the orchid that I bought, um, it might not even be that. But, you know, so me separating it out into two pieces and cutting away all these growths, it's, it's not ideal for sure. Um, but I kind of, you know, I want to plant it so that I don't have to worry about it for a few years so let's just go with that plan for now and we'll see how it goes so I've got some bark here next to me I've got really big chunks on this side if you can see and then I've got kind of medium to small bark here and I've got seedling bark 
further away but I don't see it be that getting used. I think I will mainly use these big chunks um, so let's just try and drop them in the pot and we'll see if they actually go to the very bottom or if they get stuck because they are pretty big but again you know all these aerial roots they're not gonna enjoy I don't think a very wet kind of environment so the airier we can make it the better chance these roots are gonna have to actually survive they've also got growing tips pretty much all of them and I hope that that will also you know that's gonna be a positive um, and that these roots are going to be able maybe to adapt better um, because when the roots stop growing then for them to adapt it's kind of you know almost impossible really because they're not growing anymore so they're not really doing anything you know their their only kind of function is to to just hydrate the plant and for them to try and adapt to something new is it's just not you know they're not actively kind of growing anymore so and the roots normally would be adapting when they're growing um so yeah the fact that these are all actively growing might just give me the chance to to kind of get them to adapt but they are very long so that's you know that kind of also doesn't really help um in terms of adaptation so i'm just trying to kind of get through all these roots and push the media down into to the bottom of the pot I don't know if this shaking will help much because there is just so many roots I don't know if um, the bark is really finding much wiggle room here to try and go down so we'll see it is really big pieces as well you can see but I mean cutlass in general you know they prefer wet dry cycles so big pieces of bark will allow for that to happen um quicker and but it might actually dry the pot out a lot you know quite quick especially with you know as i was saying with all the fans so i was actually thinking maybe to have one shelf without the fan running all the time to see if that would you know help and maybe for more moisture loving plants to um to kind of keep them on the shelf without the fan kind of blowing at them directly but yeah because because these um fans are so small you know they don't really like generate massive airflow um everywhere else you know it's so they give the airflow for that shelf but you can't really feel any airflow on the other shelf if the fan is not running so I'm not sure I kind of I'm still debating whether it's a good idea to to have you know a shelf without the fan because I do want the airflow you know to to be there for all of them I mean Orchids are obviously growing in nature, so for them to grow inside, it's it's definitely not ideal environment. And you know, the more we can kind of replicate what they get outside, the better. Which obviously, is, it's just not possible, you know, to to make it completely the same. Um, but I feel like you know, the airflow is kind of paramount, you know. Um, but then obviously there is all these other factors that we don't give, don't provide to orchids. So I keep thinking about that, you know, quite a lot to be honest. I'll maybe make a video about it, like a kind of a chatty video of my thoughts on, you know, when people are kind of saying how, you know, they're kind of, how they interpret the you know the environment and how we should replicate the environment and you know some people get to the to the place where they think actually we shouldn't even be 
um, fertilizing orchids because no one is going around them in nature and fertilizing them you know so it's I just find it quite interesting you know like how some people kind of see um, nature and you know how they kind of I don't know make their mind up on you know what they should and shouldn't do with orchids based on what they think happens in nature and honestly I'm not saying that I I know any better you know I have my own kind of interpretations as well of what happens with orchids in nature and how they're looked after in nature and obviously I'm I'm sure I've not thought of everything so you know it's but it's just quite interesting you know just the whole the whole process and the whole um, kind of logic behind things you know I just I just find it fascinating you know all these different interpretations and um, I don't think there is probably many people who've truly figured out exactly how to grow orchids you know that's why we lose them all the time if we knew how to take care of them perfectly you know we maybe wouldn't actually lose them as much so who knows um so i'm just trying now to just you know because the bark is so big there is obviously loads of gaps so i'm trying to get rid of a few gaps here and i was also thinking to actually take a bit of this smaller bar and just putting it around here and then I will shake the pot a little bit well pat it let's say um, to see if those smaller pieces of bark would actually maybe go down into the pot and maybe fill up a little bit a few of those gaps that those bigger pieces left um, because I still need this plant to be able to hydrate and with these massive pieces of bark and massive gaps in the pot it's gonna be a challenge um, so let's see but as you can see as well and sorry I should have maybe explained it a bit more but I didn't use any moss or you know ceramics or anything water retentive because I don't want it to retain any moisture to be honest I think bark should be enough um, especially since all these roots are aerial um, I'm trying to kind of keep this orchid in place as I'm patting so that it doesn't start lifting out of the pot um, because normally that's what happens you know bar goes down and then the roots and the plant goes up <laughs> so I don't want it to lift itself out of the pot and then you're gonna have to start it all over again so some of the pieces I can see fell deep into the pot so I'll just put a little bit more on the top to have it all the roots kind of covered as much as possible and yeah I do wonder how this is gonna go if these roots are gonna like it or if they will actually be protesting a lot um, but that's it repotted so let me I'll take you in closer and we can kind of have a look around around the pot and see see what we've got in here okay so i thought this orchid is gonna look ridiculous in this massive pot but actually um you know maybe because it's kind of separate and there's two pieces here it's maybe not looking that bad um but yeah so let's have a look at the root ball so you can see there is actually still some gaps left without any bark at all but there is no holes here so you know the holes here hopefully it will provide some airflow but up here there might not be as much so maybe the gap in in the media is gonna help these roots not to fail as quickly um, and then we've got these roots kind of going around the pot and then we've got here and you can see all these grow tips so I'm I'm just I really really hope it's gonna do well um, and then there is more bark here but you can see there isn't roots on this side so it's gonna be okay and you know the new roots that do grow into the pot they will be used to the media so they will be totally fine and I tried to pot it kind of lower down so that you know this one when it pushes out new growth is probably gonna be further up so I wanted to have it quite down in the pot 
so that at least a couple new growths can actually, you know, the roots can reach the media. And you can see this new growth is, is just pretty much right at the base. So yeah, we'll see if it grows well. Also bigger pot means that it's gonna be kind of closer to the light, you know, because it's the pot itself, you know, the size of it has kind of lifted the plant up closer to the light. So hopefully it's gonna get enough light as well and you might get some blooms. It's supposed to have the prettiest blooms. Um, they, sh they should be kind of purpley, bluish um, kind of color. So I am really looking forward to that. But um, yeah, as I say, I had this plant for a while and it's not, it's not bloomed yet. So um, we'll see if the label goes in. So yeah, this is a name, LC Cariads Mini Quinny Angel Kiss. So massive name and yeah, but a tiny plant. So <laughs> let's see if it blooms for us. And lastly, if you're still here, um, let's just have a look at a couple of blooms that I've got at the moment. Um, so this is my Tolumnia Flyer Golden Fan and these blooms are just beautiful this orchid has been blooming for me for months it initially had two spikes and they both bloomed separately so that kind of gave me a prolonged blooming period and then this spike here when it was finishing blooming it started growing some branches and it's now opened all the blooms and there's probably actually more blooms now than there was when it was just you know a spike on it so without branches and um, let me see if I can get closer into these blooms they're so pretty see like they've got the yellow is just so bright and then the petals and sepals they've got this kind of brown dark brown um, color and the lip as well it's got this dark red brownish kind of lip as well in the center they're very pretty and you know when they are they are in a cluster like that it's just a really beautiful sight um so i think that one will still be open for a bit and the the blooms still look pretty fresh so i'm really really happy with this one and the next one is my dendrobium hibiki it just started opening flowers so there's not really that much to show but there is so many buds this time and i'm really excited to see what it's going to look like when it's all opened and um, so you can see it's got a couple clusters here at the base and then there is one here and then another cluster here another one at the top and then on this skein at the top as well so this is going to be a really nice show and i can see as well that these blooms the the colors are a lot brighter this time so when when it bloomed for me about a year ago it had quite bright flowers as well and then it bloomed kind of on and off throughout the year and it would just have maybe three or four flowers but they were so washed off you know these colors you could just barely see that they're actually purple but now they seem to have kind of gained the color back um, which makes me so happy um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to see when um, what it looks like when it kind of fully opens all of these blooms. So this hibiki is, is doing, it's, it's quite happy plant, I think. And then last but not least, this is my complex hybrid Phalaenopsis. And um, I mean, it does bloom out and off for me pretty much constantly, you know, that's just what these fowls do. Um, I mean, the spike, you can see how the, how twisted the spike is and um, I kind of did it not on purpose but I had to kind of do it but it looks actually quite beautiful I think um, basically it was you know it was sitting on the windowsill and the light was the window is on this side so it was getting light from here and that spike was kind of growing towards the light and it got to the point where it actually started touching the window and I was um, scared to lose the spike so I turned the orchid around and then the spike was obviously reaching the light from that side so it started turning this way 
and um, yeah so I got this beautiful shape on in the spike uh, which uh, you know it's I, I actually quite like it but what I noticed this time that the blooms are a lot bigger this time than ever before you can see how massive they are I honestly I don't think I've seen this plant having such a massive blooms and also it's got two blooms open and then I've got one two three four five six buds at least six there is one here as well I don't know if it will keep growing so we've got six eight flowers basically coming then I've also got the branch here that one has got another maybe three three buds at least if not four so this is by far the best blooming it ever had and um, I normally get six flowers out of a spike so this time even without the branch it's gonna have eight flowers plus another four on here so that's ten flowers on the same spike kind of at the same time so that is definitely um, the best blooming so far and I just can't get enough of these massive blooms they're just so big and you can see they are pristine white sepals and petals and then the lip has got kind of yellow and orange um, coloring and then it's got some stripes there deeper in the throat um, and then it's got these kind of um, two stripey bits at the end of the lip um, so definitely very cute and very elegant flowers so I am really enjoying them I'll see what these flowers look like when they all kind of open if they're all gonna be that big um, I'm definitely gonna post a picture on Instagram once it fully opens because I can see already this is gonna be a massive show um, the orchid itself I think is doing pretty well it probably is due for a repot at some point um, the leaves you can see as well they started turning towards the light and um, whereas the bottom leaves are kind of on the other side but that's okay I don't I don't mind honestly um, I just put it on the windowsill because I think when I had all these lights um, on every single shelf there was it was just way too bright for it and it would start purpling up and um, so I was afraid to kind of fry it so I'm keeping it on the windowsill it's a north facing window so there is no direct light coming through the window but it's still bright enough um, you know for the orchid to grow well and you know you can see it's got all these beautiful tips on on the roots so it is enjoying its life and you know these massive blooms I think just prove it you know that this orchid is a happy one so that is it you guys if you're stayed for so long thank you so much for watching this video I know it was really really long um, but I haven't done a video in a while um, you know before the unboxing one so I just wanted to give you a bit of an update and a repot and just wanted to make it a bit kind of different um, than you know a lot of videos on my channel before so I hope you guys enjoyed um, if, if you're still here uh, and if you're still kind of listening to me thank you so much um, and yeah don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this format of the video um, and yeah I'll I hope you guys are all well and I'll see you in the next one bye